I'm going to teach you how to make some substrate. So for this substrate you're going to need coir and vermiculite and that's it. So let me take you outside and show you how it's done. So a lot of people have trouble getting the, their coir out of the out of brick form. So what I do is I take a tent stake and I just kind of stab it and do that and it breaks it up and I got a, got a scale. I'm going to weigh out 650 grams because that's the size of a, of a standard coir block. You could also just buy standard coir blocks. Alright, I got it all loaded up in the bucket, all weighed out. 650 grams of cocoa coir and 2 quarts of vermiculite. I went ahead and boiled 5 quarts of water and brought them into my room. And I got everything laid out on a, on a towel to catch any mess. Now what you want to do is pour about 90% of the water you boiled into the bucket. Now at this point you want to grab something you can mix with and just mix around in the bucket real nice. You should see that the coir has expanded and it's looking it's looking all right. Here's how much of the the 5 quarts is left. What I like to do is put the lid on, just give it a nice shake. It's going to pop like that because of the steam, but that's good. It's helping you get to the right moisture content. Now as you can see I'm breaking up clumps in here with my hand as I find them. So I'm stirring with my tool because it's real hot, but the clumps are dry so they're going to be cool. But you want to break up those dry clumps in order to get it evenly hydrated. Alright, things are looking pretty evenly mixed now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put the lid back on, give it another another good shape and secure that lid on now we let this sit until it reaches a temperature of 80 degrees the reason why we add the boiling water to it is to cook the cocoa coir and to pasteurize it in one step and the reason we have the lid is to retain the heat in the bucket so it pasteurizes for long enough all right guys, we finished pasteurizing our substrate right here and we let it cool down to 80 degrees before we start doing anything else. As you can see, I got a bag of fully colonized grains right here. Don't worry about the species right now. Any saprophytic fungus will grow in cocoa coir. We're going to need some water, some scissors if you used a grow bag like I did. This is a little technique that I tried out uh, last week and it worked pretty well. We're going to actually soak our colonized grains for 10 to 20 minutes before we colonize it to the bulk substrate and that's going to just let it let the mycelium be stronger and colonize a little faster and another thing that I do is I put it directly into fruiting condition but we'll get to that at the end. Alright so what you want to do is take your grain bag and cut just below the filter And if you're using jars, just open up your jar. 
then you're going to want to break up your drain. Take a smell. Smells like pretty good mushrooms. Now what you want to be smelling is some real nice mushroom smells. You don't want any weird smells. And when you're looking at it, that's a nice, nice healthy Christmas feeling right there. This is going to I can tell this is going to come out nice. So once your grains are loose, you want to take some water and add it to your grains. And you want it to fill just up to the top of the grain level. Now what, what we're going to do right now is go, we're going to let this soak for 10 to 20 minutes. And we'll come back. Now what I like to do during this time personally is have some of that raw garden sauce. So I'll get back to you. Alright, we're outside. I've been soaking my grains. Um, so what we're going to do now is pinch off the bag like this, or any way you choose, as long as you can stop the grains from falling out, but let the water precipitate out until it's done dripping, like this. See, my fingers are holding the grains in. Alright, once your bag has stopped dripping, it's at the correct moisture level. Alright, it's about now that I'd like to remind whichever YouTube moderator is checking out this video now that I'm a medical patient in the state of California. And what we're doing is legal, so age restrict, don't take this video down. And I haven't mentioned species, so this video... This video is completely Gucci. Now we gotta spawn our tub. The way I like to do that is by mixing. We're gonna wanna take our substrate. First make sure you line your tubs. That's gonna stop you from getting side pins. So you're gonna wanna take your substrate make sure it's at field capacity before you do anything because if it's not that's how you get contaminations that's how you lose yields that's how you contaminate entire gardens it's not no good so mine is and yours should be too if you do it the same as me what field capacity means is um if you squeeze it you won't feel that it's wet but if you squeeze it real hard, a couple drips will come out. And that just means that there's no wetness on the surface for bacteria to grow. And that's gonna that's gonna help you help you in the long run. So what I like to do is take a few handfuls of this, put it in my tub. Break up any clumps that I see, you know. Just get like a, get a good amount going. I like to put almost as much as I'm going to use in the tub. And you'll see why. Alright, I actually have my liner taped in the holes. Which is a good idea. You just put a tape on the outside of your holes. And then push your liner against it. And it will hold it up. But, at this point, I like to take it off that tape. So it starts conforming to the shape of the tub right and I re-stick the four sides right here. Now we'll take our grain. Dump them in. Mm. Now there's a myth that uh, spawning grains to bulk is a sterile process because it's not. And 
uh, you don't have to do this even with washed hands. I, I recommend that you wash your hands. Uh, but by no means do you need to sterilize. Because at this stage, the mycelium should be healthy enough that it will, it will overrun any infections. And if your water content is right, then this will, this will do really well, well for you. So right now I'm just going through my grains and breaking up any clumps. I want to get as close to individual grains as possible. So to get as many inoculation points as I can. All right, and at this point, I start digging in the corners, pulling them in, and pushing the middle out. And that gets you a really good mix. Because you wanna, you really want these distributed everywhere as evenly as possible. And the places you miss the most are the corners. So you really wanna get in there. And it's been a good, minute or minute and a half just mixing these around as as thoroughly as you can mm. <clears throat> all right once i feel i've gotten them evenly mixed what i do is i take a couple more handfuls of substrate and just sprinkle it on top really evenly but i'm trying to trying to make it so i don't see any more grains at the top at the surface. This is kind of like a fake casing or a faux casing. Uh, what it does is it promotes upward rhizomorphic growth which is what we want for a healthy pin set. I have another tub that I spawned like this about 10 days ago that I'll show you at the end of the video and it shows a lot of res uh, rhizomorphic growth. Alright, and this top layer, you really just want to sprinkle it on there, just like, I just, you really just want to sprinkle it on there. Breeding conditions. And for this, we're going to need two different things. A Sharpie. It's always important to label all your things. It's a micropore tape. Notice how we're not using polyfill. The reason I like to use micropore tape is because it provides more controllable and reproducible results. Alright, we've got our substrate spawned and our liner cut. Always mark the tub, not the lid, because lids can get interchanged. Now that we've marked our mono tub, we can move on to putting micropore tape on the holes. Before we get into this, I want to discuss why we use monotubs. We use monotubs to cycle air. If this is your monotub, you're gonna, your mushrooms, your substrate's gonna be down here. Oops. So your substrate's gonna be down here. Then you're gonna have mushrooms over that. And the entire organism, mushrooms and substrate, needs oxygen to survive. And it needs a certain amount of oxygen in order to trigger, pin, uh, trigger pinning, which will lead to, lead to fruits in the future. So what we do, as mycologists, is we cut holes in the side. Right at the mushroom level. And that allows the mushrooms to exhale their carbon dioxide, which is heavier than oxygen. And then you cut holes at the top. On, on the two sides, which allow the air to come in and out the holes. We need to regulate that exchange so it's not too fast, so we don't dry out our substrate. And the way we do that is adding different layers of tapes in different proportions on the holes. So, let's get started. Now it's important that you get a quarter inch of overlap right there. 
Otherwise, you're going to be letting too much air in. All right, these side holes are a little bit different. I'm going to be putting two layers of tape on, but the second layer will be offset by a little bit. Let's pause here at the first layer of tape and notice that the overlap is smaller than the upper holes. The second layer we're going to apply farther away, leaving a gap, allowing for airflow to get between. So there's going to be a single layer uh, and two sides that are two layers thick. Now simply repeat it on the other side. Wow, that was quick. Now it's done. Now let me show you how well this technique works. Whoa! <coughs> oh. <coughs> All right. As you can see, this one's been colonizing for about 10 days now. And there's tons of rhizomorphic mycelium growth right there. And as you can see, it's starting to knot up real nicely. I've just had this in the sun, get a natural, natural light cycle. Uh, not in the sun, just by a window. And as you can see by the moisture on the walls, it has great, uh, great humidity. And I'm going to add a picture right here that I use flash. And it'll show you what how well the gas exchange from these works. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed. Make sure you leave a like, comment, subscribe, and share this video around. This, this, is, this is stuff that needs to be known. Alright, peace guys.